Hi, welcome back again, Kat. Uh, thanks for being on the My show pleasure. again. Uh, Kat Casey from CS Disco. She's a chief product innovation officer. Mm -hmm. Do you say yep. that right? Chief innovation officer. Okay. Product too, though. It's just fine. call. Just, they call her chief. They should. <laughs> they should. <laughs> so uh, we're going to talk now in this last part of our series on artificial intelligence about some of the challenges of organizations that don't adopt and don't get on board. Uh, so w what do you see the the potential risks and pitfalls are for law firms that don't begin to embrace some sort of some form of technology mm -hmm. assisted review or artificial intelligence to help speed up the re review process. Well, at a very basic level clients are getting smarter. We've got clock, we've got clients talking to each other more and they've raised their expectation of how their firms are going to be competitive. And it used to be if you were big law firm A, you would always have this corporate client for every antitrust case they would always go to you, but now I was getting dozens of RFPs where they're asking me, what technology are you using? How are you driving innovation? How are you driving efficiency? Because there is a higher expectations of competition between outside counsel that maybe wasn't there a few years ago. And so the client expectation is driving this appetite to investigate e-discovery and mm -hmm. AI-based uh, innovation in a way that wasn't here a few years ago. Has there been any, any industry research that has attempted to benchmark what the costs of a case using an AI platform to speed up review versus not, to your knowledge? You know, I can speak from Disco and we see about a 60% reduction in time to evidence to production and that translated into dollars. And so, I mean, 60% savings on the 80% of a case that is review mm -hmm. is, is substantial. Um, the thing that I think is most important is cost savings big, but getting evidence quicker. Yeah, time getting, is of the essence sometimes. That is the thing that is paramount because a lot of these mm. companies, I, I worked at a company that had very big budgets, yeah. but no amount of money, no amount of people was going to be enough to get these insights I needed before the meet and confer or before yeah. I had a critical filing with a government investigator. Mm -hmm. And so getting evidence quicker yeah. so I can start building my case was the differentiator. Yeah, cer certainly if you're, you're working for a company facing a DOJ inquiry, yeah knowing you know, the good, the bad, the ugly yep. as soon as possible can help you make better decisions for your mm -hmm. clients, which might involve you know, Settling. settlement. Yeah, yeah. You know, there have been many recent settlements mm -hmm. recently mm -hmm. uh, from big companies that didn't want to get Well, and I've had cases things. where one of my favorite ones, I used tons of different AI and analytic tools. I had a big bank that had been fined billions of dollars and other big bank was they had hired on people in that same group and they were wondering if they would be subject to the same investigation. So I did some social network analysis, who was talking to who with what frequency. I parsed Bloomberg chat, I parsed audio logs, and I used everything to keep triangulating down until I was able to identify the bad actors saying the bad things and then map it to structured data to show they didn't do the bad things. And my company wasn't on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. My company wasn't fined. Mm -hmm. so it, it ends up being very compelling even early in investigations. Yeah. C certainly, uh, responding quickly is important now. Mm -hmm. have, have, you seen, um, have you seen any success stories as it relates to um, companies embroiled with data breach incidences mm -hmm. that have used your, your platform to help get ahead 100%. of what was going on? I mean, PII, so personally identifiable information, is something that you're going to have to notify if there's a breach. So if, if someone, say you're Equifax, not that I'm naming them, but say you're a big company with a lot of personal identifiable or health information, you need to identify it quickly, notify these people in their specific timelines. Tools like Disco's help you use algorithms to find that quickly and act upon it. Um, otherwise, if you're looking at 100 million records, there's no amount of humans that could go through that in a timely manner where you're going to comply with your time obligations. And so it's, it's majorly impactful. Uh, certainly. Well, um, are there any other things you want to say on the show before we wrap up? You know, I adapt. Uh, the, the reality is no one wants to be the buggy whip maker in a Tesla world. Um, th the time to start investigating and vetting and ensuring that the tech you're looking at isn't hype is now because in a year or three years or four years you might be behind the curve. So find your resident dork, ask questions, yeah. dig into the tech, um, and now is the time. And it's probably worthwhile, you know, without being you know, biased towards what vendor, why not take a case, try out Disco, try mm -hmm. out another offering to see what really works. I mean, you had the benefit of, yeah. you were you were on the other side working for the law firm, oh, shopping yeah. for vendors. So I did a 55 vendor RFP. I've seen everyone, I've looked under every hood, 
I mean, there's a reason I went to Disco, but there are other tools good out there. I think you want a toolbox with lots of different tools. If you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Let's be honest, litigation is always bespoke, so you want lots of tools that can help you address it. Great. Well, thanks ag yeah, again for pleasure. being on the show. This yeah, was great. Awesome.